Hello, my name is Ricardo Farinha. I'm originally from Portugal, but I've been living and working in Finland for 14 years. And uh, my background is in uh, software engineering. So I've been in the technology world all my working life. And I've been working in this architectural and engineering in construction all my work life. So I've been trying or I've been working with teams that uh, uh, digitize or try to digitize the industry itself. So today let's talk a bit about data and, uh, and uh, this idea that, that I believe that data is the new or it can bring help us bring superpowers to the construction industry. So we are living in a digital age. We are living in an age where technology is growing exponentially. So, and the amount of data and knowledge in the world is also growing exponentially. So in these next graphs, you see a, a good uh, description of what has happened historically. So you can see on the y-axis, you can see the level of innovation of each wave. Uh, and the, the height of the wave also tells you not just the innovation level, but also the impact that it has been on the, on the business environment. And then on the x-axis, you can see the, the length of each wave. So, for example, in the first wave, it took 60 years to jump from this first level to the second level. Second year, it took second wave took 55 years, 50 years, 40 years, about 20 years, and so on. So the more, uh, so what we can see is that the waves are becoming shorter. It takes less time to make a jump, a technology jump between waves, and we also can see that the impact of that jump of the technology that is coming is higher than the previous one. So nowadays, the impact of the waves are becoming higher and higher and faster than they were before. So we are now between this wave five and six. And, and this wave six, where we, we start to be, this is called, or, or it's commonly known by the fourth industrial revolution or industry 4.0. So it's very common to hear this uh, term. So if we try to see a bit closer this, this fifth and sixth waves, which is the common let's say the, the common errors where we, where we have had computer, for example. So if we try to see this a bit, a bit closer, I define different levels of companies. So the company level zero, it was around the wave four where we didn't use, or we didn't have this kind of digital technology around yet. So all the outcomes that we produce in design was still done by hand. So we had 2D drawings that were done by hand. We didn't have computers at the time in this level zero company we don't use computers to design uh, the outcomes then when we go to the level one company this was around the time in the wave five where the computer started to appear or at least when the computers were starting to be mainstream and most of the people start using them of course computers appeared before and and this is the time that we started having this can this kind of cat systems this kind of computer aided design systems that helped us jump from these drawings done by hand for a type, a new type that are the drawings done by a computer or with the help of a computer. And as you can imagine, there has been, I mean, in this time frame, there has been, of course, a lot of automation also built. So there is automation built on top of these CAD systems that could speed up the design process inside these systems. Then we move to the level two companies. So this is the time where computers become more powerful and we started having this kind of a CAD systems that could also make 3D models, a building information model. So that even though most of the time still the outcome was 2D drawings, now the users or the designers, the architects, the civil engineers, they did also a 3D model or a building information model that contains a lot of metadata, a lot of information related to the project. And again, in this case, there is a huge automation build on top of it. So you don't design, for example, details so much by hand anymore. You have tools that help you do this. And, and this basically, a lot of the companies are still in this level two, but we start seeing now a level three companies that I, I associated with this wave six that we have. And these this level three companies, there are companies that they start connecting to different data sources and they start extracting knowledge from different types of, of data and dif different types of historical data or, or data, open data, or other type of data sources and use that information to then improve and speed up the design process. And for example, this conference is a very good example of that. There's a lot of examples of companies and individuals that are using data and technology to support the design processes that came from the level two age. So if we look at this level three and still subdivide, so inside these level three companies, you have 
you have me different levels. So, so before you reach level three, you don't use much data. Your tools, your systems, your processes, you don't look at history. You, you, don't, you don't have access to data so much. So in these level three companies, the biggest difference will be, in my opinion, that you have, a, you have access to much more data than you had before. And then you have different levels as well. So the more up you go to these levels, the more value and impact it will create. The, the solutions and of course the more costly and complexity and complex it will be to build some solution in there. In the different levels, for example, in the first level, descriptive level, you can answer questions like what has happened. So you basically this is the window to the past. You look at the data that was done in the past and you make it available for the user so that he can analyze it himself and use that information to add value to the process. Then you go to the diagnostic level, and in here you can start answering questions like, why did it happen? So you not only just look at, just throw the data that was done in the past, you actually process that information and that data and start getting some added value there to the user. So you can start understanding why did things happen? Why did the same mistake happen the same way in the three projects done in the past? So that you can then understand that and don't repeat the same problem in the fourth project. When we go to the predictive layer, you can start answering questions like, how will it happen? So you can start understanding the patterns and say that, okay, if, if you keep doing the, this type of stairs like this, it's, it's with this much percentage of accuracy that it will be a problem in the future. With 75% accuracy, you might have a problem in the future. So you can start understand what will happen if you keep doing things like that. And then in the last layer, you have a prescriptive layer. So here is how can we make it happen? So you will have systems that can understand so much about the process. They can, they can start making suggestions to you on how could things be done. And of course, as you can imagine, the more up you go this ladder, like I mentioned, the more complicated and the more data is required to do this. So, and I didn't want to stop here. I wanted to show you some real examples. So in the next slides, I'm going to show you two examples. One of the examples is going to be here in the diagnostic layer. So we are answering things like, why did it happen? So we get data, we process it, and then we extract value from that data. So the last example is an example in the prescriptive layer where we answer things like, how can we make it happen? All right. So the first example is in the diagnostic layer. So why did it happen? And in this case, so remember, these are always use cases, small use cases that solve very specific concrete case. That's usually what, what data science is good at, to solve a very specific use case. And then you have multiple of these robots or tools or systems, and then together they build this ecosystem that supports and, and adds value to your process. This is the Helsinki uh, Olympic Stadium. So the, the, this project, we needed to extend the stadium so that we have this cover. We added this roof covering in the stadium. And if you design this, I mean, you don't design this by hand. You don't do the detailing of these objects. You don't connect the elements by hand anymore that much. You have tools such as the one that is showing in the picture that would allow you to, to speed up the design process. So in this case, the user would, in this specific tool, the user would select a column, a beam, and it would add a couple of parameters in the user interface. And the tool itself would insert the objects in the model. So it would connect these two objects, these two structural members together. So as you can imagine, it speeds up a lot your design process. If you need to do this by hand, it's, it takes a lot of more time than using these automation tools. And, and the idea now, or the question is, how can we find the right tools available from the pool of tools that companies have available nowadays? It's a pretty hard job to do. There's thousands and thousands of these tools. And you have, if you are not experienced, if you have not done this designs dozens of times in, your, in the past, it's, it's quite hard to find information and find, uh, find which are the tools to use. So how could this be solved in a level three company? So, so let's look at, at the, the Sweco's example or what we have done in one of the hackathons we went last year. So we have 1,200 people using this design software. In this case, it's called Tecla Structures. So these 1,200 people are doing design every day or most of them are doing design every day and, and basically, in the last year, 2020, they have used 10,000 of these unique tools. So, so during their projects, they have done a number of projects, they have used 10,000 of these unique tools. And this, this last year, these people, these 1,200 people, they have inserted these 
10,000 tools, unique tools, they've inserted them 17 million times. So that's what a level three company will do. They would analyze this information. So you will need a data mining system that could mine the data. So in this case, how this is working for us is that we have a, a data miners inside the software that every time the user is doing something in the software, we are collecting information from the software itself to our own cloud databases. So in, in this last year, we have collected data from 18,000 projects and these data miners, they have been active for a total of 900 years last year. And we have collected data. So these 17 million times that they have inserted these parametric tools, they have resulted in 1.2 billion attributes that we have collected in our database. So in a level three company, you need to have a system that can collect the data. So, and then the second step after the collection is the processing of the data. So in this case, we want to find out what, could, what would be the right tools that we have available for us for a specific use case. So in this case, we did a machine learning algorithm that could basically group the people together by the type of projects, the type of tools, the type of, uh, type of design that they are performing. So for example, let's say that I'm now working this week on a timber school and I'm designing walls, like timber walls and detailing them. So I'll be grouping together, I'll be grouped together with people that are doing this type of uh, design, this type of uh, timber walls. Next week, I'll be moving to a project, a precast project. So I'm building not any more timber walls or detailing timber walls. I'm going to detail precast walls and, and, and start working on a block building project. So I'll then be grouped together with this type of people that do similar types of things that I'm doing. So that's the analyzing of the data. So we have now a machine that can start understanding how the data relates to each other. And then the third step is that you need to have the system to add value to the user. So in this case, we have built a simple system that when you log in here, it will find out in this case, four people that are similar to myself. They are doing similar type of work that I'm doing. And there is two of them are in Finland. Uh, there is uh, one of them in Sweden and one of them in Norway. And you can see in the left side, these are the tools that these people that are similar to me have used in those in their projects that I have never used in my projects. So here's the, the, the juice, this, this is the added value. So we have now, instead of showing you 10,000 tools that were used at Sweco, we can show you 41 tools that are relevant to the type of work that you are currently doing. So this is the difference between a level two system and a level three system. In the level two system, you might need to find information from 10,000 tools. In the level three system, the information is already filtered for you. So it's already targeted to you so that you, you spend less time trying to find information because that's the key in the level three. Like I, I showed in the first slide, if, if the amount of information, the amount of data in the world is doubling very fast. So we need to have systems that can do this, that can filter data quickly and then be able to target the information to you in a, in a right time. And, and we could even go further. So let's say that I'm designing uh, or I, the machine understands that you are actually trying to detail or detail two beams to, to like you want to connect two beams together. So in this case, the machine could show you four examples. It doesn't need to show you 41 examples or 41 things that you could use. It could show you only four and you could go even deeper. So if you go higher up in that curve here, you could have a system that could automatically already give you some suggestions. And that's the last example I have you here. In this case, we are in a, in, in the upper level, in the prescriptive layer. So in here we answer things like, how can we make it happen? So if we take a bit further, that example I showed you before, that already filters the information. In this case, we want to already automate part of the design process. So we want to, we have a, a let's say a project that is not detailed yet, and we want to somehow find ways to speed up and automate the detailing phase on this project. So this is a small fact we have designed in Finland, this is in Turku, and this is the project, it shows you the structural model that doesn't have any connections yet. So we have built a system that we are feeding the machine ex projects that are already finished. The machine analyzes these projects. It, it, it understands the relationship between the structural members and, and the connections that already exist there and how the designer has done them. So it finds, it makes, let's say, a, a virtual representation of how these connections are done so that it can then start predicting or making suggestions on the project that no connections have been done yet. So, so in this case, the machine found 
929 structural members that represents 696 connections and then the machine could find 77% of the of the connections the machine could already predict something reasonable only 23% of the connections the red dots in this picture the machine could not find matches from the input projects that were finished in the past that we have provided to that machine and, and this is also so this is again remembered in the prescriptive layer so we start having systems that can give or bring the superpowers that will support our people on their design processes they can do computations in an instant and provide us information that then is relevant to our people so we are not anymore just making decision making based on intuition we are bringing now the facts and the the data from the past for example to the equation so that we can in a very quick way find or find data that was done in the past and then use that to to our decisions in the new projects so so that's the key here so these level three systems will be systems that can effectively capture and store domain knowledge you need to have systems to do that in the, here in the left side you have the domain knowledge they are systems the brain here in the middle that can process that data and convert that knowledge that data into actionable insights and then there are systems that also can target that right wisdom that right actionable insights to the right person at the right time so if i'm designing a a precast wall i i want to see information related to that precast wall something that adds value to my process and that's that's the kind of thing that we start seeing now in these level three companies or individuals or systems so there is a lot of companies around the world and again this conference is a very good place to see already these people that are doing these level three systems that process these massive amounts of information and can extract the value from that information so I believe that data can be the key for us to renew the superpowers we have in the construction industry. So this is going to be a journey for, for us in the industry to start moving to these data-driven ecosystems or these data-driven systems. And, and uh, today I showed you some examples of, of some different tools that were built on some of these levels. And hopefully it gets you some inspiration for you to 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 start building things like this and then start moving the industry as a whole. All right, thank you, have a nice day.